Glórias a Jesus. Que nós ansiamos por esse grande We are anxious for this great day. Great and terrible day. Great for the church. The first church. We know. Redeemed. But terrible for those who will stay behind. I greet the beloved church with the peace of the Lord Jesus. And those also who watch us online. I'd like to invite the brethren to stand up. In reverence to reading the Bible. We're going to open our Bibles. First book of Samuel. Chapter 21. Let us read verses 1, 3, 6, and 9. Word of the Lord has the following. Now David came to know to Ahimelech the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid when he met David and said to him, Why are you alone? And no one is with you. Now verse 3. Now therefore, what have you on hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or whatever can be found. Now verse 6. So the priest gave him holy bread, for there was no bread there but the show bread which had been taken from before the Lord in order to put hot bread in its place on the day when it was taken away. Now verse 9. So the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah. There it is, wrapped in a cloth behind the airport. If you will take that, take it, for there is no other except that one there here. And David said, There is no one like it. Give it to me. I'm going to repeat. A little detail of the message. I like the brethren to pay attention, which is on verse 9, part B, which is, says the following. The sword of Goliath, the Philistine whom you killed in the valley of Elah, there it is, wrapped in a cloth behind the effort. Actually, this eight, the first part of the verse. Wrapped in a cloth behind the effort. Lord, we come before your altar to plead for the grace of the Lord upon our lives. We ask that everything, Lord, that we may speak may not come from men. That whatever comes from men we fall to the ground, but only what comes from the Holy Spirit. We pray for a blessing in the name of Jesus. The church may be seated. Our beloved, the text describes a passage in the, in the life of David. David, at this moment here, he runs away from from Saul, King Saul. Maybe King Saul out of envy or maybe like any other person having a feeling having feelings that do not please the Lord. He goes after David in order to kill him. And David the one whom always waited on the Lord 
for God's provision. He was a, a valiant soldier. He was bold. He runs away from, from King Saul. And the text that we see, the Bible says that he comes before the priest in the tabernacle in the town of the, of the, the priest uh, Amalek and he comes without anything he comes without weapon he comes hungry without any food completely dependent on a help from the part of that priest then he asked the priest five loaves of bread the priest said the following I don't have bread. What we have here is the bread of the, the offering, is the holy bread. And the priest goes there and picks up that bread, Go there, goes through the holy of holies where the table was. He takes the bread for David. Even if uh, going through a serious risk because uh, the bread of this offering was a bread that only the priest could eat no other person could eat that bread belonged to the Lord it was offered to the Lord but even so he goes there takes the bread gives to David and David eats of that bread and before David left he asks the priest, Do you have any weapon? And yeah, I have a, a journey ahead of me, Saul is after me, the enemy is trying to kill me. I cannot stay here, I need to continue my journey. Do you have any weapon? And the priest said, oh, well, I don't have actually a weapon. He provided the bread that he was not supposed to provide. According to the law, he was not supposed to give that bread to David. But the weapon that he had, I have no other weapon, but I have one weapon. This weapon was that sword that you yourself used to cut Goliath's head, the giant. So then they, David answered, that's the sword that I need. So he goes there and takes the sword and continues on his journey. And the priest, he paid a very high price for helping David because of his goodness, because of his grace. And he satisfies the hunger of David and Later on, Saul finds out, and King Saul goes and kills the priest. But he, the priest knew that the risk that he was running to, he knew that he could die. But even so, because of his goodness and his love, in order to give life to David, he died. And my brethren, in the same way, uh, I'm seeing many Davids from this story. We are the, this David. Did you know that? Many times we come who is the high priest, we come before the high priest empty, hungry. We don't even know if we're going to have strength to walk the following day. But we come before the altar of the Lord. And, but He never sends us away in the same way we enter, empty handed. Because the songs of praise speak to our hearts, the message speaks to our heart. The brother, sister that glorify brings life, giving blessings to, to our heart. The teaching from the part of the Lord. This environment, this atmosphere where the angels walk, the Holy Spirit is present. We cannot leave this place in the same way we entered. Not at all. Because the King of Kings is with us. 
the high priest is with us to give us the provision, to give us what we need. After a long, uh, a tiring day, if I describe to you what happened to me, you will cry. <laughs> if you tell me your day, I will cry. But we came here because of God's grace, tired, exhausted, but knowing that we are not going to leave this place empty. We know that God has the bread. But it's not a, just a common bread. It's not a common bread. It's the holy bread. God doesn't have just a simple thing to give us. He gives us special things. For the servant of God, God gives something special. The word that we receive is not a common message. It's revealed. It's holy. It's the, the bread from the offering. That's the name of the Lord. But in order for us to receive this word, a price was paid. Our Lord Jesus gave his life so that today we could have the word of God. And that today we can have access to it. And that we could delight on the things that the word has in the mysteries, in the revelations, in the blessings that are contained here in this book. Closed. It's just a book. But when we open it up with the revelation of the Holy Spirit, we are able to reach wonderful things. And this is because He paid with His own life. But the Lord gave us blessings. With His own life, He died in order for us to have access to this blessing, which is the blessing of salvation, which is the blessing of forgiveness, which is the blessing of the revealed word that not, that not only satisfy, satisfies our soul, but your, our spirit. He doesn't send us home that way. There is a lot. But tomorrow there is another day, and David needed to once again to continue on his walk. And we need to leave this place today. We wish you could live here. It's so good to hear the voice of God. It's so good to, to feel this love from the part of the Lord towards our lives. But we need to leave. We need to go away and work, continue our lives. And we need that the Lord may give us something. Something to defend us from the world that is out there. The enemy is after us, trying to kill us, to make us fall, to humiliate us. But we need a provision from the Lord. And in the same way that David, as in the same way as David, the Lord wants to give us a weapon. And you know what this what this weapon is? Can anybody answer? Can you anybody dare say? What kind of weapon is this that can be can defeat the giant? Because the weapon is not normal. It was a weapon that would defeat the giant. What kind of weapon would that be? Is the blood of Jesus. Is the word another weapon? The means of grace are the weapon. My brethren, there was a vision. A woman had a, a bunch of keys. And for a long time she has tried to open a door. And the keys, and she was, has not realized that there was a key made out of gold in this uh, bunch of keys on this keychain. I don't learn English and I forget Portuguese. <laughs> there was this gold key and she did not realize that this gold key was a key that was necessary to open the door. It was in already on her hands. It is already on your hand, my sister. 
the weapon is already on your hands, the power of God, the key of gold, the power of God that can open any door, the miracle, the faith, the blood of Jesus, the word, all of this. One of those keys will open this door. One of these is going to open the door that you are, have been waiting for. They have been trying using your, maybe using your own resources, maybe other means, but it is in your hands. It is in your hands. The weapon is in your hands. David asks for a weapon, but the priest didn't give him any weapon, but did. The, the weapon that defeated the giant, and that's the weapon that is given to us. The weapon that can defeat the giant is not only depend on us. And the vision said that this woman could see clearly what she needed to do. She realized that the key was there and what he, she needed to do with that key. My sister, use this key. There are many resources. There are many, but there's only one. The, a door is one. You know what David did? David had many stones, but one of his stones went straight to the forehead of the giant. We have many keys. One is going to work to open the door. Seek direction from the Lord. Ask the Lord. Lord, I still have doubt. Don't leave this place with doubt. Know that there is a key. Made of gold. As power is just it's not a common key. It's not just a common weapon. It's a weapon of gold that defeats the giant. And this key, oh, the key is already gone. This weapon, as I mentioned, it's not a common weapon. It was the, the weapon that when the giant fell, he used the giant's sword to kill, to cut Goliath's head. And I would like to ask the brethren to pay attention to a little detail that the Lord called my attention to. And it was a detail that is, is, I think is worth sharing with the brethren. The word says that when David asks for the sword, and the priest said that he didn't have, the priest said the following. The sword of Goliath is wrapped in a cloth behind the effort. Wouldn't this Sword could this could this sword be any other place? Is that a drawer under the bed? But the, the sword was wrapped behind the effort, wrapped in a cloth behind the effort. It was the weapon of David. He was going to use for his own walk. And the Lord made me remember of a situation in the New Testament when Jesus resurrect and Mary the Magdalene goes there and sees the empty tomb and goes to tell the disciples and then John and Peter come the board describes that Peter he arrives and he looks there is a detail in the tomb that calls his attention that even John mentions on his gospel there was a cloth And there was a, a handkerchief that would wrap uh, the face of Jesus. This handkerchief was folded, wrapped there on the corner, and that called the attention of, of, of Peter. And John mentions that. And we know that the Jews had a, a tradition when they sat down at the table and they had their meal, there's a detail that when the Jew he leaves uh, his napkin thrown about and he gets up from the table, it means that he is not coming back to eat more. It's, uh, uh, the napkin is, is just organized on the table, then it means that he's finished. But if, if he folds the napkin and gets up from the table, that's a sign that he's coming back. He's going to go back. Do not take his plate. And 
and Peter there, he notices that. He notices that my God is going to return. My God resurrected, but he is going to come back. He will return. He died, resurrected, but he will return. And that's the weapon of the church, the resurrection. The third day, the church walks on the third day. The church walks after the third day, not during the death. Jesus is alive. He reigns in our midst. The weapon of the church, in fact, is a cry. Uh, the weapon of the church is a shout. What is this? Is Maranatha, Maranatha, Maranatha. The Lord Jesus is returning. Blessed be the name of the Lord, because the victory is already in our hands, is already guaranteed by the power of the blood of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's sing a song. This path in the top of heaven. The Lord also gave a vision. I'm going to share the vision completely. completely. I was seeing a woman working on a field. And this woman, she worked on a sickle, with a sickle. And the sickle was a little rusted. The handle was coming off. And all of a sudden, 
a great beast appears to attack her and and her using that tool tries to escape from that beast and she was unable no matter how many times she strikes the beast the animal the animal gets even angrier and an angel that was following all of this when she was already tired discouraged to the point of giving up the angel would go there and give her a sword and the angel would tell uh, here's the weapon and this woman with a single strike she kills the beast and the beast fall at her feet in the same way that the giant fell at David's feet. My brethren, the provision comes from the Lord. The giants are out there. All of them try to devour us and try to get discouraged. We all have giants. But the good news is that the Lord has already been victorious on our behalf. The Lord has given us the resource, the sharp sword. When Jesus was tempted, he did nothing but to defeat the enemy with the word. And we, as a church of God, can become victorious using the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord and gratitude for the provision of the Lord for his church. Lord, I'm going to praise your name. Give you hallelujahs, Lord, tonight. Because our help comes from above. And we as a church, Lord, we want to glorify you and to thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Because without deserving, you paid a high price for our lives. And you have taken care of us with riches of details. We love you, Lord. We're thankful for your deeds, for your miracle as renewed in our lives every day. For the mercy of the Lord that is able to reach us every morning. For the renewal, Lord, that comes from above. For your care in sending your angels to be all the time fighting with us. Blessed be your name, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Holy, holy is the God of our lives. To you, God, be all the honor, all the glory, all the praise and adoration. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Lord, we praise you for your provision. Glory to Jesus. I invite the church to stand up. You're holy, Lord. Lord God, we want to glorify your name, Lord. We don't want to ask for anything else, Lord. Because we have our Lord, the living bread. I have the word. We have everything that we want and that we might need. You have to give us, Lord. That's why, Lord, we want to praise you for the bread that you give us tonight and the provision that you have given us for our, our tomorrow. Because we know that in the past, the Lord Jesus overcame the great giant, which is eternal death, on the cross of Calvary. And that's why we are thankful to you, Lord, for this so great salvation, for this life, Lord, that we have in you. Lord God, Lord God, we now ask you, take us home in peace under the coverage of the blood of your Son, Jesus. Be ahead of us, Lord. Guide us. Do not allow us, Lord, to guide you, Lord, but you, we need you to guide us wherever we go. Give us your blessing 
it prepares for the service on Thursday. Prepares also for the service tomorrow on Port St. Lucie. Bless your church. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Which may be seated. Let's come to the end of another service. A glorification to the Lord. If one of the brethren need a prayer or assistance, we are here at your disposal. Help in anything that might be necessary. And to all, I say the peace of the Lord. We're going to be praying for the baptism. It's going to take place. I don't know if the pastor has already informed in, on September 21st. On the service on 17th of Pastor Zuluchi in Hallandale. Amen. And to all the peace of the Lord.